Did you know that there really was a gang of Peaky Blinders? Which real historical figures do we see in the series? Which celebrities are die-hard Peaky Blinders fans? And uh, is there a chance we'll see Brad Pitt stand side by side with Tommy Shelby? Hi, I'm Peter, and today we're going to dig into the history and real-life inspiration behind the TV series Peaky Blinders. The inspiration behind the series. The dark world of Peaky Blinders has captivated fans from all over the world, partially because parts of this high-praised crime drama are actually inspired by a true story. Yes, since the series premiere in 2013, we've all known that it's loosely based on the real-life Peaky Blinders gang from 1920s Birmingham. But what does real life mean here exactly? And where did showrunner Stephen Knight get his inspiration? Well, it seems like the origins of the story behind the series come from Knight's childhood, and even go as far back as the childhood of his parents. In the book, By Order of the Peaky Blinders, Stephen reveals that his family was genuinely connected to Birmingham's most infamous bookmakers and gangsters. As Knight's father explained, when he was a lad, his uncles and their associates were even known as the Peaky Blinders. Even though historians say that the real gang disappeared before the First World War in 1914, Stephen is sure that the stories that his father told him are true. I've consistently found books to be an unreliable source of information when it comes to working class history. I trust word of mouth, true memories, and of course, newspaper and court reports. So young Stephen grew up hearing stories about the Sheldons, the name of his paternal uncles, in what seemed to him like the tales from another world, as the showrunner put it. And these stories about incredible but fearsome characters, resplendent in their peaked caps and shiny black boots, would go on to become the series we now know as Peaky Blinders. The real Peaky Blinders. Even if show creator Stephen Knight claims that his brummy gangster family epic is based on events from post-World War I, academic research sees things in a somewhat different light. Historians date the real gang back to late Victorian times, with their heyday being the 1890s. And they weren't exactly what you'd call criminal masterminds. Police and court reports documenting their crimes include the theft of a bike, breaking into a draper's shop, and the occasional drunken riot. And they certainly weren't the only gang in pre-war Birmingham, or even later. Their main rivals were the Sloggers, also referred to as the Cheapside Slogging Gang. Just like our Peaky Blinders, who were known for the razors that they sewed into the brims of their caps, the Sloggers also used their clothing as a weapon, namely, huge belts with giant buckles. Much like petty street gangs throughout history, the members of these criminal groups were predominantly restless teenagers, meaning they were much younger than the characters that we see in the series. There were also more violent, more organized gangs emerging at that time, including the Brummigan Boys and the Birmingham Gang. There is also a general assumption that the title Peaky Blinders actually became a generic term for all Birmingham gangs. But showrunner Stephen Knight counters that the history of working class people of that time, and even today, lacks proper accuracy, as it wasn't seen as worthy of proper documentation or analysis at the time. So Stephen takes the liberty to tell things the way he heard them from his parents, from the point of view of a wide-eyed boy, impressed by the immaculately dressed kings of the criminal underworld. As Knight told the BBC, in a way, I want Peaky Blinders to be seen through the eyes of a 10-year-old, because the men are smarter and stronger and handsomer and the horses are bigger and everything is big and intimidating as a kid. Historical characters in Peaky Blinders. The powerful performance of the show's cast certainly adds a lot to its immense popularity, but the show's writers and producers managed to masterfully blur that line between fact and fiction, not only by creating some larger-than-life characters, but by inserting some real historical figures into the storyline. For example, Billy Kimber from the show's first season genuinely was the leader of an urban street gang. For several years, Kimber's Birmingham Boys Gang was one of the most powerful in England. But the goings-on behind this character were very different from those that we see on the show. In the world of Peaky Blinders, Kimber is shot dead at the end of season one. But the real-life Billy lived a relatively lengthy and prosperous life until his death in 1945. He finally succumbed to a prolonged illness and died at the age of 63, having gone straight and set himself up as a legitimate businessman. Of course, Winston Churchill was real, though we strongly doubt that the future Prime Minister of Britain was involved in the events depicted in the series. So, what was the reason behind using the old British Bulldog in Peaky Blinders? Well, Stephen Knight explained to The Observer that, apart from playing an important role in warning Britain and the world about the encroaching dangers of fascism, Churchill also shared some similarities with the character of Thomas Shelby, namely, their tenacity. He suffered greatly with depression, and he famously drank a bottle of brandy a day, and he smoked his cigars, and yet he always survived. I really like that idea. 
reviled politician Oswald Mosley is another example of a figure from history who made his way into the world of the show. Inspired by Mussolini's Italian National Fascist Party, the one-time leader of the British Union of Fascists formed an organisation with allegedly as many as 40,000 members at its height, known as the Black Shirts after their chosen uniform. Mosley tried to hold rallies all over Britain, often targeting working-class areas such as Birmingham, just like in Peaky Blinders. And the character of trade union activist Jessie Eden is based on a real personality of the same name. But she would hardly have been involved with Tommy Shelby for one very obvious reason. There was no real Tommy. The head of the Peaky Blinders is a work of fiction. The fact is that Stephen Knight never planned to make a historically accurate series. Rather, he wanted to explore the psychological damage inflicted by war on young men. They've returned from the First World War very damaged and they are violent as a result of their experiences. In a recent Reddit Ask Me Anything session, Knight announced that Series 6 would see the appearance of a new historical figure who may surprise people. Fans were very much intrigued and there's speculation that it might be infamous Chicago mob boss Al Capone or even Adolf Hitler. However, the showrunner has denied that he's planning on necessarily heading west, so Al's appearance is hardly likely. But the idea of seeing Hitler on the show could be closer to historical fact rather than fiction, as the dictator actually attended Oswald Mosley's wedding ceremony to second wife Diana Mitford as the guest of honor. But for now, all fans have are theories and speculation. Peaky Blinders Celeb Fans Talking of the fans, some aren't just watching the series and coming up with theories, there are an influential handful that actually want to be part of the show. That's right, there's a bunch of celebs that would give anything to get a chance to star on screen alongside the Shelbys. In 2016, Stephen Knight told Crime Scene Quarterly, I've had unsolicited communication from Michael Mann, the film director, from Dennis Lehane, Snoop Dogg, he's such a fan, and the late David Bowie was a huge fan. More of that to come. Turns out that Snoop Dogg even arranged a meeting with Stephen Knight when he was in London, and the two spent three hours together talking about gang culture. Knight commented on this to The Independent, it's incredible. I mean, I don't know where the connection is, but it's really taking off. It was surreal. Killian Murphy later revealed that he gifted musical megastar David Bowie one of his flat caps. Murphy told Birmingham Live all about it. We were friends and I sent him the cap from the first series as a Christmas present. He was a very sweet man and a genuine fan of Peaky Blinders, and I was a huge, huge David Bowie fan. Stephen Knight added, It's a major thing that someone like that was a fan of the show. He said he wanted his music to be a part of it, but at the time, I didn't know it was his dying wish. Sadly, David Bowie wasn't around to witness his swan song Lazarus become a part of the soundtrack of Peaky Blinders Season 3, as he passed away before the premiere. Another unexpectedly dedicated fan of the show is former England striker David Beckham. When he appeared in pictures posing with some of the show's cast, decked out in 1920s attire, rumours began to circulate that David might be a part of season 5. But it never happened, possibly because Stephen Knight is rightly reluctant to allow celebrity cameos on the show. This is how Stephen explains it. In terms of appearances, we've always had a lot of incoming interest. What I'm trying not to do is to populate the scene with people who are known for other things, because I think it's quite distracting. Knight also went on to speak about it at the legitimate Peaky Blinders Festival. He also confirmed that former Oasis frontman Liam Gallagher and Brad Pitt had both expressed an interest in making an appearance. This was later confirmed by Gallagher's own tweets. When asked by a fan what he was up to a couple of weeks ago, the Mancunian musician commented, Thought you'd never ask. Yeah, I'm off to meet a man about a part in Peaky Blinders. Why me? Why not? See ya. And he later described his brummy accent as biblical. So, it's safe to say that the Birmingham gangster drama attracts its fair share of attention from A-listers. And even though the latest seasons of the show have broadened their cast to include a long list of big names such as Adrian Brody, Aidan Gillen, Sam Claflin, and Anya Taylor-Joy, it's pretty unlikely that Brad Pitt will ever join the cast. However, Knight did say in an interview with The Guardian that we get a lot of people who get in touch and want to take part. I think in Series 6 we'll open the door a little to get some celebrity actors in. All we can do is wait and see. Who would you want to see cameo in the show more than anyone else? Comment below! The finale of Peaky Blinders It seems like the end of Peaky Blinders is closer than its start. To my mind, one of the major reasons behind the show's success is its dedication to an authentic tone and its integrity when it comes to making the series a complete story. Stephen Knight, creator of the Birmingham crime saga, already had a firm vision of how and when the show would come to an end from the very beginning. At last year's TV BAFTAs, Knight admitted that his ambition was to make a story of a family between two wars and wanted to end it with the first air raid siren in Birmingham in 1939. 
so that means that we'll be treated to seven seasons in total. But what about the fate of lead character Tommy Shelby? Is there a possibility of any kind of happy ending for him? Despite all the terrible things he's done, Shelby still has audience appeal, much to the surprise of the character's creators. Still, we're sure that Stephen Knight has something quite surprising in store for all of us. At a masterclass at Cannes International Series Festival, he revealed that by the end of season seven, Tommy will undergo a transformation to give him a kind of redemption arc for all his deeds and misdeeds. Knight said that he wanted to take Tommy on that journey from the person we saw in season one to the person he'll become in 1939. And this is how Knight answered a question from The Observer about whether Shelby is even worthy of forgiveness and redemption. I think it's achievable. I think I'm on the road to that. However, the finale of the show doesn't necessarily spell the end to the story, and there's a definite possibility of a Peaky Blinders spin-off. So as the final season of the show wraps up, the mastermind behind it will find himself free to consider his future plans. And he's already done just that. Speaking about different aspects of the show that he'd like to explore further, Steven said, I love doing it. I love the world. We were originally going to end it with this series, but we thought to ourselves that so many people are just getting into it that it'd be a, such a shame to stop. Knight also admitted that he'd been approached about doing a Peaky Blinders musical, or perhaps a ballet. Can you picture what that would look like? But it's most likely that we'll see a spin-off from the show, or maybe a movie. And we can absolutely count out a prequel, as Knight has stated that he's not a big fan of them. In his own words, he thinks that they're limiting as to where it can go. We may get an exploration of where the world of the Peaky Blinders will take the characters after World War II, perhaps. And who's responsible for the decision on whether to give a spin-off or a potential movie the green light? Well, that decision rests in the hands of Stephen Knight himself, along with Killian Murphy and producer Karen Manderback. So, let's keep our fingers crossed and binge watch all five current seasons of Peaky Blinders while we wait for the crew's collective decisions. Are there any characters you'd like to see in a Peaky Blinders movie or spin-off? And, uh, any events that you'd like to see it portray? Well, tell us all about it in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe so as not to miss out on the best stories behind your favorite shows. And of course, as always, stay awesome.